Um, I was browsing through a, a bookstore the other day, and I came acro across this book. It's called The Treasury of Clean Church Jokes. And I believe that all jokes should be clean. And a absolutely. That's true. Amen. Because the use of, of foul language is an evil thing. So we are going to prove to you, I'm going to say one joke each month, and we are going to prove to you over time that jokes can be clean and they can be funny. And we will discuss, we will discuss the joke and, and make you understand it if, if you, if you haven't quite caught on, because some of these are, are pretty complex. And some of them are are even over my head. I don't even know what 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 they mean. So I found a really good one, and I'm going to say it right now. A church member told her pastor that his sermons on television meant so much more to her husband since he had lost his mind. Hmm. <laughs> That, what do you think, Oral? That was that was your joke, Isaiah. Uh, yes. Well, I, I I suppose there was some humor in it. Um, uh, I myself uh, have uh, have never been very uh, very big on uh, a, a sense of humor. Um, I feel that uh, it, it's it's a, a rather frivolous uh, sort of thing, and that it's not terribly necessary. This is a definition of a d devout golfer. A man who prays with an interlocking grip. Well, now I say, that wasn't that a good joke? I, I like that. Well, now, I personally, I have a little fault to find with that joke, uh, because as I mentioned, the interlocking grip. <laughs> It, 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 not, it, it doesn't work right very well. Pray. No. Oh, that, that, that's right. I, I forgot about that. And we shouldn't be telling people to pray with to an pray interlocking grip. The wrong way, because the point of doing the show is to get them to pray the right the way. The country church was located so far out in the woods that there was no indoor plumbing. However, since baptism was such an important part of the church life, they improvised by building a baptistry under the pulpit. When it came time to baptize, they would move the pulpit to the side, open the trap door, fill the baptistry with water hauled in by a large tank truck, drop some wooden drop some wooden chairs stairs down into it, and string up some curtains. The thick curtains were carefully hung on wires. One curtain served as a backdrop to the baptistry as it was pulled around in a circular position. The curtains were also arranged in such a way as to provide a men's dressing room on one side of the, the baptistry and a woman's dressing room on the other side of the baptistry. The young pastor of this country church was to baptize his first two candidates, an elderly, an elderly man and a very heavy set lady. Shouldn't we offer to help our young pastor? asked one of the deacons. It was decided that the deacons would give special attention to the elderly, elderly man lest he fall on the slick wooden steps. On the evening of the baptismal service, one deacon waited in the baptistry with the pastor. Oh, I, I skipped the page. And another deacon carefully helped the elderly gentleman down the stairs. After he was baptized, the deacon in the baptistry helped him up the stairs and followed him back behind the curtains to the dressing room. But no one thought to help the young pastor with the baptism of the heavy-set lady. Excitedly, she stepped into the baptistry on the first step. The wooden step, slick from standing underwater so long, proved to be her downfall. She, her feet slipped and she promptly sat down on the top step. Then, one by one, she bounced down the baptistry in, in the sitting position. They claim you could hear her... Oh, oral. I'm not quite finished yet. Oh, I'm sorry, I say I thought that that you had finished your your fun fest of frivolous fable. No, I'm, I'm, I'm about half done. Going. Okay, so it'll just All be right. another minute. All right. They claim you could hear her scream a mile away. Screaming and bouncing down the stairs, she reached up to grab the only object available, the curtains. Curtains. So down into the baptistry with the with the screaming lady, 
came the men's dressing room and the women's dressing room. Women's dressing room. There, visible to the eyes of the whole congregation on whole one side of the baptistry, was the elderly gentleman in the process of getting dressed. The elderly gentleman. He had already donned his long-handled underwear and was in the process of pulling up his trousers. Pulling he dropped his trousers. his trousers to the floor and stood paralyzed, staring at the surprised congregation. Then he picked up a nearby chair and held it in front of him. Do something quick, one of the deacons shouted. So a thoughtful deacon ran to the back and turned off all the lights, thinking that the man would take the hint and get to get dressed in the darkness. I'm not quite finished. Nope. There's, there's a few more lines. All right. Okay. Five minutes later, when the lights were turned back on, the man was still standing there in his long-handled underwear, protecting himself with the chair. The lady, still gurgling and bubbling in the water, was fighting the curtains. The young pastor, in shock, was standing in the corner of the baptistry with his arms folded and his eyes staring straight ahead. <laughs> that... that was your joke? Isaiah, that... I... I can't believe that you made us sit through all that. And that was the best joke that you could possibly come up with. <laughs> yes, it wasn't it funny? I liked it very, very much. Well, although I'm laughing now, I can't help myself. I didn't think the joke was that funny. And I think that if you're going to waste my time by telling a joke that takes 17 minutes to tell, you waste the whole show, you deserve to... You, what do you think you're doing? Ow! Oh my goodness. Did something bad just happen? Oh my goodness, what have I done? Isaiah, are you alright? I think... I think... Something bad just happened. Oh, well... Well... I'm... I have... I have prayed to God to forgive me for what I've done, and... And I know it's alright. Everything is, is going to be okay, Isaiah. Um, because I'm not to blame for this because God There's blood forgave on me. my face. Well, but that's okay. We'll fix you up and everything will be all right and you'll be as good as new. Oh dear. What, what have I done? Um, no, I'm, I'm fine. I've, I've done nothing wrong because... Oh dear. Slightly shaken by all this. Um, um, God has forgiven me and I have nothing to worry about.